And now, Game Theorist Theater presents a dramatic recreation of Bowser stepping on Big Blue. Welcome to Game Theory, the joker that no one is excited to see enter the Smash conversation. So when I've covered Smash in the past, it's always been at a larger scale. Piecing together the lore, searching for secret levels hidden in the game's code, doing things like calculating the infinite number of ways that you can play this game. All of those episodes are actually linked right there, upper right hand corner of the screen. But today, I actually wanted to do something different. I want to focus on something a little bit smaller, a little bit more subdued. One character, one move. Seems lame, right? But this isn't just any move, my friends. It is a move that is faster than Sanic. It is stronger than Ganondorf. A move that is so brutal and violent that it takes Gar Plane and suddenly transforms it into Gore Plane. E for everyone, Nintendo. Ha! You wish you didn't include this move because it ruins the E for everyone rating. Technically. You see, one of my favorite things about Smash is its ability to test the limits of character moves and items. Smash Brothers is one of, if not really, the only arena to test different fighters from different franchises against each other. You want to race against a supersonic hedgehog and an electric rat? Great, you can do that. How about an all-out slugfest between gaming's two most famous reptilian kings to see which one reigns supreme? You can do that too. I mean, I could seriously just watch the compilations of characters trying to leap through longer and narrower pathways in this game, because you always get surprised by the results. Like the fact that Little Mac over here, who literally cannot recover to save his life, is somehow able to escape the tallest hit in the game faster than you could say Final Destination, no items. Suck on that, Kirby, with speed boost and jump ability. That's according to a video by Nintendo Unity, by the way. Or the fact that there are multiple ways to create a move that instantly does 999% damage because spirits are broken and this game is fun. But it was while watching another one of these sorts of videos that I was inspired to do today's theory. You see, back in December, the channel Community Game actually did a video testing out who could survive running on the stage Big Blue. Now, to catch you up, Big Blue is a level inspired by the racing game F-Zero, a game that takes NASCAR and cranks the dial up to 11 because now you have racers flying along on the track at hundreds of miles per hour. Now in Smash, the big blue stage actually has you fighting atop a jet and then some of the smaller race cars, all the while while the track is flying by underneath you. If you land on that track, it's almost an instant death as the platforms race ahead to leave you in the dust and as a mere off-screen explosion. Yeah. As such, you can also treat the roadway of Big Blue almost like a giant treadmill. A treadmill that is so fast that only the fastest characters are able to keep up with it. But, according to this community game video, even those speedy racers could use the help of an item. This is me injecting those characters with a little bit of extra juice. But not deadly juice or steroids or anything like that. That This is brand friendly, guys. Even though we're talking about brutally murdering childhood mascots. When I'm saying extra juice, I mean injecting them with like a bunny hood or a spirit boost or heck, some mega mushrooms. YouTuber Aaron Vo did an incredible job of testing to come up with a tier list of everyone's ability to survive this level, thus ranking everyone's speed. And the results are kind of what you'd expect. Sonic is at the top. Duh, the only character who's able to survive solely with the help of a Mega Mushroom. And then you have Fox, Captain Falcon, Sheik, and Little Mac following around shortly behind. Now, that's cool and all, but there is someone who is faster. Someone who doesn't need items to outpace the racetrack of Big Blue. We all assume that Sonic over here is the fastest character in this game because it's his brand and all that, but he's not. It's actually Ridley, the fire-breathing space pirate dragon from Metroid, a character that has died so many times he's got more lives than a cat. Now, Ridley is a brutal character. It says a lot when his introduction to this game series is him literally killing the game's mascot. But it's his forward B attack that's particularly unique. He 
can pick up his opponent in his talons and then just physically drag them along the ground. And if that wasn't violent enough, he's actually able to do it fast enough to outpace the Falcon Flyer. In this footage right here, he is actually outpacing a jet flying above a futuristic NASCAR race. Granted, things in the Smash Brothers series always have to be taken with a grain of salt. In the name of balance, we need to tweak things a little bit so that when Palutena, who is literally a god, faces off against Isabel, a Shiba Inu, it doesn't end up as a one-sided stomp. But still, the speed and violence of this one move is unprecedented in the Smash Brothers series. And when you actually stop and do the math behind what's really going on as a part of this move, it suddenly turns this family-friendly game into a gruesome bloodbath. So be careful the next time you pick your favorite character to play as, because you might not want him having to go through the physical horror that this move is gonna subject him to. I mean, think about this. If you've ever scraped your knee on the pavement, you know how much a small, low-speed scrape with the ground is gonna do to you. Just imagine the level of devastation that would happen if you're going at whatever speed Ridley is going at here. Where others decide to speculate, game theory decides to calculate. <laughs> Went on much longer than I expected. And that is exactly what we're gonna do today. <laughs> the first factor we have to consider here is just how fast Ridley would have to be moving in order to outspeed the stage itself. Now, when you're playing the game without stage hazards, all you get is the Falcon Flyer jetting its way along the racetrack. This isn't particularly helpful for our calculations though, since believe it or not, the Falcon Flyer never actually appears in any F-Zero game. Yeah, for as prominent as this thing is in Smash Brothers, its only connection to the F-Zero lore is one frame from one comic from the first game's instruction manual. Yeah, and then one page later, you have this blatant ripoff of the Kingpin from Spider-Man. No, to get an accurate read of this stage's speed, you actually need to turn on stage hazards, which unleashes a legion of actual race cars that are playable from the F-Zero games. And that part is critical there. F-Zero is a racing game. And so like any good racing game, it has a speedometer that we can then use to gauge what kind of speeds these racers would be traveling at on the Big Blue course. Now, to calculate the speed of Big Blue over here in Smash Ultimate, we actually did 30 runs of the Big Blue track over here in F-Zero GX on standard mode. Now, it is worth mentioning that the Big Blue track in Smash is very different from how it actually looks in F-Zero games. So, for consistency's sake, we actually wrote down the average speed only on straightaways. Those 30 runs were spread out across three different racers, Bloodhawk, Super Falcon, and Fire Stingray, all cars that we see in Super Smash Brothers. Across all that data, we found an average speed of 1,087 kilometers an hour, which for us still living in America land is 675.4 miles per hour, which is pretty tame by F-Zero standards, but for a bunch of normal fighters, that is ludicrous speed. Prepare ship for ludicrous speed. Especially if you're the guy who's getting dragged by the fire-breathing space dragon. From there, we can estimate Ridley's speed. It takes just shy of 14 seconds to drag someone the full length of the stage. If you want to get exact, it's actually 13.98. And in that amount of time, you're actually traveling a distance of around 98.5 feet based on the relative sizes of the fighters. Ridley's average speed then would be the speed of the race cars plus the amount that Ridley is gaining on those vehicles for a total of 600 80.2 miles per hour. 680 miles per hour. That is 100 miles per hour faster than the speed of a commercial plane. He is almost flying at the speed of sound, which is 761.2 miles per hour. 1,225 kilometers per hour. Technically, he's at 0.88 Mach, which is actually an interesting coincidence, since 0.88 Mach is actually a fairly common flying speed. You see, most things in life have a most efficient or optimal setting. And in the case of flying, this is often based on the shape of a wing. Now, on average, both airliners and fighter jets choose to fly near the 0.88 Mach speed because they get the best gas mileage relative to their wing design. Once you start getting much faster than that, you actually start getting air disturbances from minor shock waves that are produced as you get closer to the speed of sound. Now, I don't think that any of that was intentional by the Smash team. I just think it's a really cool coincidence that Ridley finds himself flying at those speeds. Well, 
I suppose it's cool for him. It is absolutely devastating for whatever cute Nintendo mascot finds themselves unlucky enough to be gripped in his talons. Let's talk damage, shall we? People who fall off motorcycles at speeds over 50 miles an hour can expect to get some third degree road rash, if not worse. Now, third degree road rash, much like third degree burns, are no joke, like exposed muscle and bone. No joke. So if that's 50 miles an hour, Ridley here is dragging people along the road over 10 times that speed level. Imagine how much more damaging and painful that would be. Oh wait, you don't have to. I calculated it for you. To get a better idea of what Ridley road rash would look like, it's helpful to understand conceptually what road rash actually is. Why does it hurt to get a scrape? Well, scrapes are caused by friction. That's why it doesn't hurt when you go down a slip and slide. A slip and slide is specifically designed to have low friction. The rougher the surface though, the more friction there is and the worse the damage is gonna be. And there are a few things as rough as asphalt. And to prove it, we actually have a special guest today a portion of Los Angeles's roadways. Los Angelinos, you wonder why your potholes are so bad? It's a bunch of us YouTubers stealing pieces of your roadway for our edutainment YouTube videos. Congratulations. But seriously, look at how rough this thing is. It is like the world's most aggressive loofah sponge. Yeah, this is bad. But there's one other component of friction here that we have to take into consideration, what's called the normal force. A force which acts perpendicular to the direction of your motion. It's basically a more complicated scientific way of saying, hey, the harder you press down into something, the more friction you're gonna have. This combination of the two factors, the roughness of the surface, and how hard you're pressing down when you're rubbing them together is expressed by a fun mathematical formula, F equals UN. Now, whoever says science isn't fun hasn't learned about frictional force equations, am I right? Up top. We're all, we're all my math and science nerds at, up top. Okay. So that first F in the equation is the force of friction, F sub F, which equals the coefficient of friction, little U looking number, a number that represents the roughness of the surface times the normal force, N, the thing that we just talked about. So to know just how much of Mario's face is being turned into a human pavement eraser, imagine this is Mario, we need to determine two separate things. First, how rough is the track of Big Blue? And secondly, how much deadly rage is Ridley putting into his dragging side B attack as he rubs Mario's face against it? And you get this. A Mario that's a couple inches shorter and also a scratched knuckle. Shoot, I should probably get a band-aid. The first question is easy. We'll assume that the track is just asphalt, like most other NASCAR tracks. Now, in all fairness, F-Zero's racers do use futuristic magnetic levitation systems that let them hover above the track, so there is a slim chance that the track's made of some smooth metal like titanium, but considering the fact that Ridley performs this move across all sorts of surfaces, across all different textures, using asphalt here isn't gonna be that much of a stretch. Therefore, our coefficient of friction is going to be Point 0.9. Then comes the question of how hard Ridley's pushing people down into the stage. Now, Ridley doesn't seem like the type to pull his punches, so let's calculate it as though he's pushing his victim down into the ground using his full weight. Ridley in the games doesn't have a cannon weight. Heck, Ridley doesn't even have himself a cannon height. I mean, his size is constantly changing across the Metroid series. You thought the Ridley is too big meme was only an argument for Smash Brothers fandoms? Ha! Think again, friends. Here's Ridley's height compared to Samus in the original Metroid for the NES. And here is his height in Metroid Zero Mission, which is supposed to be a remake of this original game. In Metroid 1, here's Ridley, he's like 25% taller than Samus. And then over here in Zero Mission, he is literally 111% taller than Samus. He is literally double Samus's height. And if you want more examples of Ridley's fluctuating size over the course of these games, montage time. So why does any of this matter? Well, 
Ridley's size relative to Samus is important because while Ridley doesn't have himself a canon size, Samus does. According to the Metroid 2 manual, Samus in her suit is 190 centimeters tall, which means that she's six foot three inches. From there, we can use Smash's character scaling to our advantage for like the first time ever in one of these theories. It allows us to settle the disagreement that exists around exactly how big Ridley is relative to Samus. Obviously, the scaling in these games isn't exact, but if there's one thing that we can count on, it's that these games try to be somewhat faithful to their source material. I mean, Sonic is really fast, Bowser is slow but powerful, and heck, Villager's stone cold stare is just as soulless as it ever was in the Animal Crossing games. And with that said, we can actually find out that Ridley's model appears to be about 25% taller than Samus, the same as he was back in Metroid 1. So we're gonna go with that. That would make him 238 centimeters standing up, or about seven foot 10 inches tall. Using this approximation of Ridley's size, we can actually now estimate his weight. Based on all the details from Ridley's design, he most closely approximates an American alligator, a reptile that actually weighs in between 200 and 400 kilograms, or in American land 440 pounds and 790 pounds. With his height just under eight foot, Ridley would actually trend on the smaller size for the species. So we're just gonna take that lower bound as the range, 440 pounds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time to have some fun. And by fun, I mean plugging hypothetical numbers into a scientific formula that has a cute acronym to remember it. Solving for S, we find that the frictional force is 2,478 newtons, which is meaningless. Newtons are always weird to interpret. So you know what? Today, we're not caring about the digits. We care about the damage. So let's translate this into some destruction, shall we? Now, in a past episode of Game Theory, covering just how deadly Mario Kart's races are, we determined that in a car wreck, for every mile per hour you're going over 30, you're gonna lose one millimeter of your body. Roll the clip. Since the average thickness of human skin is 1.3 millimeters, at 31 miles per hour, you hit the ground, you're looking at losing most of the skin that's covering up your delicate inner parts. Ridley is dragging you 650 miles per hour faster than that. That means 65 centimeters of your favorite character's body is just disappearing into the pavement. That's this, and then another one of these, and then like five more centimeters. 25.5 inches, over two feet of human flesh, or poke flesh, or Kirby flesh, just gone, erased. Also, notice how Ridley is actually doing the dragging of your character's body. He's not using you like the long end of a pencil here. He is dragging you long ways. That means each and every inch of your body is feeling the burn. And then guess what? It's not feeling that burn anymore because it's just ground away into nothingness. It is gone. Your body isn't two feet thick. I mean, you might be thick, but not that thick. You're just gone. And wait, that's not all. That number is assuming you don't have a 400 pound space dragon shoving your face into the dirt. If you don't think that's gonna affect the numbers at all, well then you don't game theory, bro. If you thought having two feet of your body just outright erased was bad, now for every mile per hour over 30 Ridley's going, suddenly you're losing yourself 3.5 millimeters of flesh. Yeah, that is 2,275 millimeters of flesh ripped clean off your body. Nearly 90 inches or seven and a half feet rubbed into the ground by this one move. It doesn't matter if he's holding you sideways, upways, downways, diagonal ways, who cares? You are just gone. You are rubbed away into oblivion. The pencil that your body eraser is attached to is suddenly squeaking against the paper that it's trying to erase because the metal is now hitting it. And just thinking about that sound is making me cringe. It's the worst feeling ever. Just pencils, man. Ugh. Sure, your damage counter may only be reading a mere 17% or 20% or whatever, but Ridley has just cheese grated your jiggly puff into the ground. In this game, yeah, 
It's all for fun, it's all cute. Oh, look at our favorite characters punching each other in the face. Yeah, super fun. No, in real life, if you do the math, Ridley is literally ripping you to shreds using the ground. Forget Mario Kart being the deadliest Nintendo game. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a new champion. So the next time you're looking at that huge roster of faces all begging you to choose them, now with the new additions of Joker and Piranha Plant, there's only one clear choice to make. If you want to brutalize your opponent, and I mean really make them hurt, the choice is obvious. Ridley every time. Even if you don't officially win the match, you and I and all the rest of us theorists will know that you are doing a heck of a lot more damage than Nintendo over here cares to admit. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Erase me away. This is me erasing away. Ah, no, I'm being wrapped into the dirt.